of the things I've noticed as a grief specialist in both my own healing journey from grief as well as my clinical care as a clinical psychologist is that when it comes to grief, so often we focus on re-narrating and creating new meaning around the loss of the individual who's passed on. And we kind of forget to turn inward and look at what new narratives, what new meaning and purpose do we need to have for ourselves in order to continue forward. Grief and loss is dark and hard as we've been exploring in this series. It's very, very complicated and impacts everything from the way our body is functioning and up to the, our ability to even think clearly. And we can get stuck in it for a really, really long time. I know I did get stuck in it for five years. And to this day, I, I'm still grieving. I will never not be grieving because I love deeply and I lost in a really big way. So how do we change the narrative internally? As I was on my own journey, I kept running into these major internal roadblocks of, is it safe to move into a relationship again? Is it safe to love? Am I deserving of love? Can I handle another big loss if I do create space in my heart to be in a relationship with somebody else? Is it just better to be alone? I mean, can bet you that my little friend Amy the Amygdala doubled down on the just be alone narrative because, hey, why take the risk of welcoming possible pain? And our brain is very, very good at that. If we've experienced really severe pain one time, our brain is hardwired to say, mm -mm, we're not doing that again. And so if you're noticing that you're struggling with some of those roadblocks, guess what? That's your friend, Amy the Amygdala, taking good care of you. She's a fierce warrior protector and isolation, alienation, disconnection are some of her favorite ways to ensure we don't get hurt again. Not just in terms of grief and loss, but also in terms of any type of trauma related to another human. If we've been hurt by humans, our brain goes, mm, I don't know if I want to do humans anymore. Not a big fan. The problem is, is that our brains are also hardwired, designed to desire human connection. And so you can see that can create a hurricane or a storm of conflict internally. And that's where there's a new opportunity to build the purpose forward, to take a hard look at the stories that our amygdala is telling us about the relationships we can safely have and to explore what type of relationships we want to have and to separate those two out because safety can feel like isolation or disconnection. Safety can feel like for some people, and I've seen this with some of my clients, using people for very clear temporal reasons. You know, hey, we're gonna have a lot of sex and then we're gonna move on, but I'm never going to emotionally connect. And yet there's a part of them that's yearning for a deeper intimacy, a deeper ability to be vulnerable. However, the brain is keeping us safe. It's just high five, Amy, it's keeping us safe. And the way to start to change and create a new opportunity for us to feel safe in the world and feel safe with ourselves to, is really to go deeply inward and look at how is our brain keeping us safe? And is this the way we want to be kept safe? Is this actually working for us? From there, we can start to bring forth new opportunities and trying on different ways of being in relationship with ourselves and others in the world. Sometimes we need to give ourselves permission to do the hard, painful things, such as calling a friend and reaching out for help, such as going on a first date if you haven't been able to do that since you lost somebody, or trying on going on a fifth or sixth date with somebody. I know a lot of people We'll do a series of first initial, hey, what's ups? And then, ooh, the anticipatory anxiety of this person is starting to feel too close. I'm going to shove them out of my realm becomes overwhelming and there is a sabotaging cycle that destroys the relationship. It's okay to feel all those things. This is all a part of the grieving journey as well. And so if you're struggling with this, just know there's nothing wrong with you and lean into self-compassion and most importantly curiosity why is your brain making these choices what is your brain scared of how is your brain trying to protect you spend some time exploring this and a, a really wonderful exercise is the left-handed right-handed journaling non-dominant dominant journaling and we'll link it in the show notes below so you can learn more about how to do that as we get curious about ourselves we can partner with our brain to build our way forward 
for me personally, I still get very worried when my now husband is away. I get worried when I think about what it might be like if something were to happen with him. And he travels a lot. So, hey, that's a real thing. It could happen. And guess what? At the end of the day, I change the narrative for myself and I create a new meaning making around it. When I'm with him, I love fiercely. I love deeply. And I cherish every time I can make him laugh and every time he makes me laugh. Because I now have learned that, hey, humans can disappear like that. And that can be an opportunity for reminding us to stay present and connected, to stay here right now with those that we love, rather than allowing the fears of the future to guide us. But first, in order to create that shift, we have to partner with our friend Amy the Amygdala and start building new ways forward for that loving, kind, inward care. Thank you.